Welcome to my creative writing course. My name is Sipran Joseon. I'm an author and publisher. Today we're going to talk about structure of a story. The simplest and most widely used structure has five elements. First, exposition. Background information that establishes the setting and describes the situation. That means you might set your novel in your village or in a city or anywhere you like. That's where the novel starts or the story starts. Number two, rising action. Characters face or try to solve the problem. This results, this results in a conflict within themselves or with others. So if you watched uh, the movies of uh, James Bond, for example, 007, you will see what I'm trying to tell you or any other movie. It could be Harry Potter, it could be uh, movies um, from Nollywood uh, industry. I mean, the good ones, stories have the same pattern. It could be the story of the grandma is still the same pattern. The third element we're going to look at is the climax. The story reaches a crucial point. The tension that has been building reaches its peak. At that point, when you, you are in the middle of the book or you're listening, to the grandma story, you start to shiver. You have empathy you, for, for the hero or heroine. And then um, you are wondering if uh, the hero or heroine is going to survive. Now, the next element is falling action. Explores the consequences of the climax. The tension in the story begins to ease. You see your hero will come out from the problem gradually. You know, when I was a child, we used to say uh, the hero never dies. If he dies in the middle of a story or, if, or she, sorry, he or she uh, dies, that means that's the end of the story forever. So if you're a writer, try as much as possible to play more tricks with your readers and making sure that your hero or heroine uh, did not die in the middle of the book or in the, or, or in the middle of a, a movie. Now, the last one is resolution. Story's central problem is finally solved. It could be bad or good ending. Readers get a sense of completion. Now, all what I have just told you now looks a little bit um, uh, difficult. If I should say, I need to give examples, give more details, speaking the five elements again. Now, if we throw the five elements in a story, for example, in the highlight of our story, that is the highlight is your point. Some people write like that, but I don't. I just start writing and then the characters uh, appear and I follow the characters and so on. But now following the standard method, we're not going to create sentences, what I call uh, um, uh, uh, story sentences. You know, you start with the five sentences or you start with 10 and so on. To now illustrate the elements I've just mentioned, the five elements, how do we start? I start again with exposition. Now listen, fine boy Uche plots to kill his elder brother, King Kano, and Kano's son, Ikemba, to become the king of the animal kingdom in the pride lands of Africa. That's um, an imaginary book, for example. 
That's the exposition. You start from there. This guy wants to kill his elder brother and son to become the king. So you can see the motive, the ambition, what he wants. The second is the rise in action. What happens now? Fine boy Uche is successful in killing King Kano. That is his own brother. He killed his own brother and manages to convince Ikemba, that's, that's the son of the brother, that the tragedy, sorry, that the tragedy was Ikemba's own fault and advises him to leave the kingdom and never return. This, uh, uh, this is uh, how fine boy managed to camouflage his sin or camouflage um, uh, the horror he committed in the family. Now we come to the climax of what's going to happen in this story. Ikemba grew up away from home and returns as an adult to take back his homeland from fine boy Uche. So we now are in revenge. Ikemba is a man now, he's able to reason. He say, no, this guy killed my father and wanted to kill me and even had a slant, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, told people and even told people that uh, I was the one that uh, killed my father, you see? Just like fake uh, news now, you know, that was happening. Uh, some people, we can uh, uh, um, it's, uh, uh, some people can write anything about you. But during those days, you know, it was oral, oral tradition. And then it's a question of taking the gong, 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 gong. Uh, now he came back, killed his father. That was when he came back, left the village. But he came back, came back to say, I will. I was not the one. I did not kill my father. Now I'm coming for, I'm going to avenge my father. Fall in action. Fine boy Uche is about to kill Ikemba and reveals that he murdered King Kano. Enraged, Ikemba gets the upper hand and forces fine boy Uche to reveal the truth to the rest of the people of the kingdom. So when, like you heard, when he came back, came back, this same man, fine boy Uche, wanted to kill him because he has, he, he, in fact, he has to eliminate him. Otherwise the secret will be out. But uh, fine boy, uh, he came back, overpowered him. Resolution, fine boy Uche, begs for mercy and Ikemba spares his life. So, so you can see the cunning guy, fine boy Uche, begs for mercy. That is, he did not succeed in killing Ikemba. Yet, fine boy Uche attacks him and ends up getting himself killed by the lion. Ikemba finally takes over the kingdom. So, in fact, the moral of this story, very short, which you can now develop, and uh, you can get a novel out of this, is that you have to be very, very careful with the members of your family. That is, that's what we call the elephant in the house. You have to be very, very careful. It's better you have, you is, uh, sorry, it's better you trust the enemies outside than the enemies inside. That it, is, it is a very beautiful story. And uh, each one of you can create a novel from here, from your own perspective, your own point of view, and then put in so many characters. The question is how uh, did um, a, a fine boy Uche kill his brother? Why is it that his brother, uh, a king of uh, the kingdom, uh, allowed himself to be killed that way like a rabbit. So there are so many things that uh, um, uh, will come up, so many questions. Another question is, why did uh, Ikemba agree that he uh, killed his father or even deceived by uh, fine boy Uche? 
So when you ask that question, you have so many answers coming up and you are developing your novel. You are going to the next chapter and so on and so forth until the resolution uh, is that Ikemba takes over the kingship, which is very, very interesting. So you can imagine the difficulties, the obstacles of um, the hero, because eventually the hero here is uh, Ikemba. Yeah, the hero, that's the hero's journey. So you can see what, when we talk about the hero's journey is from the ordinary world to the extraordinary world. You can see how the life of Ikemba was transformed by the difficulties he had. Uh, and again, his bad experiences transformed him. And again, even if he took over the kingship, he has changed. He's not the same. He will never be the same anymore. So that's it, guys, for today. Uh, what uh, we call structure of a story. Some people write it down when they want to start their novel. Some people um, keep on writing and they add all, all these elements, the five elements of uh, uh, structure of uh, um, stories, uh, structure, structure of a story. So thank you. And uh, make sure if you like what you are hearing and watching, hit that subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment. Thank you, thank you.